Matt Tilford was just 18 years old and two weeks away from graduation when, on a camping trip with friends, his truck sped off a cliff, falling 600 feet. The truck started to tumble, and I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. I was ejected as we were going down the hill. Do you remember going off that cliff and landing? I was going in and out of consciousness, and I didn't realize it until I looked down, and that's when I realized, it's like, oh man, I am paralyzed. This is, this is serious. As someone who thrived in the outdoors playing sports, Matt was suddenly confronted with an entirely new reality. I was definitely freaking out. I was thinking of my future, what I was gonna do. He had to relearn the most basic tasks, like how to get dressed, wash, move around. After my accident, I came home and I was depressed. I didn't want to leave home. Watching my friends go off to college and start their life, I felt left behind. Four years later, Matt got a life-changing opportunity to test out a new exoskeleton rehabilitation device being designed by Exobionics. What was that like to put on that exoskeleton suit? How did that feel? It felt absolutely amazing to be bearing my own weight, you know, my legs holding myself up within the device. It was, it was surreal. The suits help people with spinal cord injuries or those who have suffered a stroke stand and take steps, something many are told they'll never be able to do again. How does the technology work and how does it work with the body? Basically, it's think of it as a wearable robot and it has four actuators that replace the user's muscles. And then the user interacts with it by actually shifting their weight, just like you would go to take a step. The exoskeletons are accessible around the country at hospitals for rehabilitative uses in hopes that one day the patient will no longer need the suit to walk. By having that sort of interaction where they're in control of the device that keeps the signals coming down from the brain trying to walk, at the same time they're getting that therapy and their legs are going through a very natural gait, so that signal is getting sent back up and that's really what you want is that collision of signals uh, to help with the neuroplasticity and to help that regain that ability to, to, to walk without the device. Given the scope of Matt's injuries, it's unlikely he'll ever walk without an exoskeleton. But that doesn't mean the suit doesn't have other major benefits. It gives them that sense of independence back a little bit. There are other benefits just to being upright. You might have improvements of your bowel and your bladder function. Some people have some pain stemming from their nerves because they're just in that improper position that sometimes goes away with some folks. So this is the history of some of the things that you've built over the years? Uh, exactly right. We go all the way back to 2006. This was our fiddler crab exoskeleton. Uh, this is a medical exoskeleton that has six actuators, so powered ankles, some devices uh, for powering your knees for military applications, and the last one's our industrial chassis prototype for uh, construction industrial workers. The history of the exoskeleton goes way back. In 1890, Russian inventor Nicholas Yagin patented the first exoskeleton powered by compressed gas bags to assist with walking, jumping, and running. Whether it was ever built is unknown. In the 1960s, General Electric and the U.S. military created the Hardy Man suit using electricity and hydraulics. But the device was so dangerous and uncontrollable, it was never powered on with a person inside. Even more recent models in the early 2000s were considered too heavy. But around 2005, battery technology became a game changer. We figured out how to do it efficiently. We had the lightweight uh, materials and structures, and then we had the computing processing power, which is a key one to actually bring it all together and make it work. Other companies such as SuitX and Rewalk Bionics are designing suits for patients to use in their everyday lives at a price tag of around $70,000 per suit. EXO is also working on technology that could potentially impact the over 17 million people in the construction industry who perform rigorous work with heavy machinery. We now have a product out there that really makes their tools weightless. And, you know, that doesn't seem like much until you try to, you know, operate a 35-pound tool all day long, and it's just exhausting. It's true, though. I mean, I can't imagine doing that up and down, up and down all, right, all day so long. so now grab it. There you go. Oh, wow. It is weightless. Yeah. That's amazing. What do you think the potential is in this technology? I'm not sure that I can see an endpoint. Like, I believe that there could be those pants one day, you know, that it is your XO pants that are so low profile that, you know, that it can support somebody. 
For now, Matt continues to test exobionics technology and rediscover the ability to do things he once thought would be impossible. I wanted to prove people that I was still going to be okay, I was still going to be successful. I learned how to still be active with sports. I wakeboarded and, and snowboarded and once I did, it was, it was absolutely amazing. What does it feel like when you're in the suit today? I think every time I go from sit to stand, a smile comes on my face. Just knowing that I'm at eye level with everyone else. It's going to give people the opportunity to do things that they weren't able to do before. And it's cool to be at the forefront of it. On another episode of Seeker. It's taken hundreds of years to understand how Earth's magnetic field works. But now that we do, scientists are trying to find hints from Earth's history that might reveal the future of this ever-changing invisible field all around us. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Seeker.